Hello, my name is Dr Kate Ringham and I am the Programme Lead in Applied Accounting at Oxford Brookes University. Um, the purpose of this video is to consider what is reflective writing. Reflective writing is important because we use that in our skills and learning statement. So what is reflective writing? Reflective writing is evidence of reflective thinking and reflective thinking usually involves looking back at something often an event so in the context of your research and analysis project this might be a meeting with a mentor it might be doing a presentation it might be the um, the way you undertook your research and then it's analyzing the event now notice here we're talking about analyzing not describing analyzing the event and thinking from different perspectives to explain why and how you've learnt. And then thinking about what that idea or event means for you as you progress as a learner or as a practicing professional. And the reason that we include reflective writing within your research and analysis project is because it's a really important way that you learn so this is linked to the concept of experiential learning. Now there are a couple of models that explain what experiential learning is, one by Kolb, one by Gibbs. You're not expected to use models in your skills and learning statement. There is no need to reference these models in the skills and learning statement, but it is helpful to understand what we're trying to do. So if we think about Gibbs's reflective cycle, we're thinking about what has happened and how you were thinking and feeling and what does that mean and what have you learnt from the situation and if this happened again how would you do things differently would you do things the same and the reason we see the importance of experiential learning is that when you are employed when you're in the workplace and throughout life you're going to learn from experiences so you might be, if you're in full-time study at the moment, learning a lot in the class classroom. But when you're employed, and if you are already at work, you'll know that you learn a lot through the experiences you have. And the RAP experiences have been designed to help you understand the benefit and value of experiential learning. So the skills and learning statement, which is where we consider our um, ability to reflect is 2,000 words addressing two questions. How have you developed personally and professionally as a result of undertaking the research and analysis project and how will the experience of the RAP help you in the future? So it's really getting to the point of how have you learnt, how have you grown, how have you developed and what does this mean in the future? because that's taking you round that experiential learning cycle. So the first question, how have you learnt? So you might want to consider at this stage the new skills that you've acquired and how you developed them, challenges you faced and how you overcame them. And when we link this to the assessment criteria, you'll see in the assessment criteria, there is a bit about recognising strengths and weaknesses. So if you're considering the skills that you acquired, you might first have thought about what your own strengths and weaknesses are. In question two, you're asked, what does this mean for the future? And you might be considered here about how you might be more employable and capable, how this might influence your future plans in both the short and longer term. So think here about um, possibly your own career the skills that you might need for the, the career plan that path that you're thinking of and do think short and longer term. I mentioned the assessment criteria and it is always worth thinking about the assessment criteria when you're preparing your work. Um, so when we look at self-reflection we can see that we're assessing this on a pass-fail basis. So um, we at Oxford Brooks aren't seeking to evaluate and grade the nature of your experience, we're asking to see evidence that you can reflect. So please don't think we're judging, 
the quality of your learning. We're just seeing whether you have the ability to reflect on what you've learnt. So um, you can see in the fail um, criteria there, um, if there is an emphasis on description, you're likely to fail. Little discussion of own strengths and weaknesses or of challenges faced. So that's a bit about how you've learnt and what you've learnt. And please remember that we are very focused on good academic practice. And so if you do use a template or you copy sections of your skills and learning statement from another student or an online source, then that is unacceptable academic practice and you will be failed on that basis. There are other videos in the series that talk about um, how you can structure your writing um, for your skills and learning statement and the style of writing that we expect in the skills and learning statement.